Patreon has demanded that we dress up for Halloween. So not only are we going to dress up, we are going to assume personas. And we figured it out today. We're not going to tell you what it is. But our Halloween episode, if you li- if this is the first time you listen to us, this is a Halloween episode. Like anybody that joins and that's their first episode, they're going to be like, these guys suck. What the f- <laughs> is this? <laughs> but the rest of you will really like it. Welcome to episode 40 and a half. 40.5. The reason why is because we recorded two podcasts while we were in Kentucky. One with My Daily Bourbon. Chad comes out Monday. That'll be episode 41. So we wanted to drop something quick. Uh, not quick, but now. Yeah. Because we had some stuff happening we wanted to talk about. But before we... we uh, wait, well, we just don't want to wait two weeks to talk about it. We had a yeah. lot happen in the last week, weekend. Yeah. So. We're not going to talk about too much of that this time. But we are going to get into the cigar stuff. So oh, that's right. We cool that. cigar stuff happened. Before we do that, we were drinking on this Sweetens Cove, which is actually a golf course. It's supposed to be like the field of dreams for golfers. Oh, really? That's what they say. But they said it's like at the end of a, um, at the end of a dirt road or something, and then it just opens up. I don't know. I don't look at pictures of it. No. But I guess there's like a bunch of sports people that own it. One of them being Peyton Manning. Ah. And so this is the 2021 release. And it is a four, six, and 16-year Tennessee bourbons that were blended together. And this is what they made. So it's 113 proof, and this is a $200 bottle, mm. <sighs> which I financed. All right. <laughs> mm. That's pretty good. Not a bad pop. Not a bad pop. Cheers, sir. Club, 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 club. Glub, glub, glub. Okay. So, this bottle, we've been told... Oh, I got spilled on the label and it turned colors already. you think they made labels uh, burn-proof, but who knows? But no. So, I've been told that this bottle is the best of the Sweetens Cove releases. Last year, I think it was a 13-year something or another. I don't know. I didn't try last year's. However, there's a guy on Instagrams that hit us up and said that he's local and would trade us a pour of that for a pour of the last year's. Oh, yeah. So Let's we'll try them out. Probably do that. But yeah, yeah, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. It smells pretty good. I'm almost getting like a like a barbecue, like a barbecue hint. Like the like smoky meat on a barbecue, yeah, or yeah, like yeah. barbecue sauce, like sweet barbecue sauce, like maybe maybe like a hickory smoked hickory. barbecue. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Yep, I definitely get that. I'm gonna taste it. Lots of notes, but predominantly on the fin- we to go straight to the finish. Predominantly on the finish, I get a lot of cracked. Black yeah, right on the tip of your tongue, kind of the out the, the edge of your the front of your tongue. It just kind of sits there and kind of tingles a bit. Gives you like a t- it reminds me a little bit of that um, that barrel we had, the barrel bourbon, the oh yeah cinnamon bun one. Yeah, yeah, the cinnamon bomb. We actually bought one of those. Bought one of those bottles. I mean, it doesn't taste anything like that. I just mean the tingling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You bought one of those bottles. Yeah. So did I. Did you? Mm-hmm. It was that good. Like yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it enough that I'm like I. When the, the few times, a handful of times a year, anyone comes over to the house and wants to try stuff, like this needs to be something yeah, they try. For sure. Because and of how, just how different it is. It's way different. It's, it tastes like big red and cinnamon, um, big red and like the Mike and Ike's maybe. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can get your own bottle. At- but it's not, but it's not like a, it's not like Fireball. It's not like a, a no, no, sweet no. liqueur. It's, it just it's picked. Like- it just if, if, if any possible note that's related to cinnamon, this barrel happened to, to create. Yeah, it's pretty phenomenal. But you can pick it up where at Justin's House of Bourbon. But that that we were doing a review on something else. You're right. Sorry, it's all good. This yeah, back to this. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be more enthusiastic if Peyton had showed up. They said that if you take a good picture, Peyton uh-huh. Manning will show up and sign the bottle. Really? And uh, he didn't. I sat there all night. Mm. Well, I went till dusk and then. If it was Monday night, he was commentating. It was Monday, Monday night, night, football night. Try again tonight. Take another picture. And did you rub it good? 
Like, uh, so stro- like stroke it really Chad good. Chad said that I may have rubbed it too much, which I don't know the rules on rubbing, but I know that I did not shake it more than three times. Shake it once, that's okay. Yeah. I think I think rubbing versus too much or too little really depends on who you ask. I was going to, maybe I'll do the, the uh, tip. Yeah, just rub the, the tip. top. Yeah. Instead of the whole, because I don't want to get fingerprints all yeah, over. Yeah, but the, you get this nice thick glass bottom. You don't want to, you don't want to not get. Yeah, you definitely got to support the bottom of the glass. Yeah, and then it's make very sure. very heavy. You, okay, that's good. All right, so <clears throat> uh, cracked pepper. <laughs> Yeah, lots of cracked pepper. If you want your bourbon reviewed, <laughs> info at whiskey and Um it w- Yeah, so you get the pepper on the finish, which is really like, it really lingers. Um, but I also get some like traditional yeah. bourbon stuff, the cherry, the vanilla. There's, I didn't want to say cherry because I'm tired. I'm honestly just tired of saying it. But, but it's, it, I actually watched another episode of someone else that, drinks a lot of whiskey and they said the same thing that like every every whiskey i drink or bourbon i drink i'm getting hit in the face with cherry and i don't want to say it anymore yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it i mean it's there and and you, dark fruit whatever you want to call it but there's also some hints of of grain like uh yeah shortbread kind of i definitely uh, get the grain cereal bread or cereal grains oh, that was the other thing too like ashton from the virginia cheese company which if you are a patreon member you can go watch our whiskey and cheese class on there which we charged 80 it was a good deal. Was it eighty dollars a person? I think it was. Yeah. So if you subscribe at our cheapest level, which is three dollars a month, you know how long that would take you to pay back eighty dollars. Granted, there's no free whiskey involved, but you yeah. can go and buy it. The cool thing about the way uh, Matt and Ashton set this one up was that they chose whiskeys that are and cheeses that are super accessible. Yep. A lot of you probably have these whiskeys if you have a decent collection, or you can definitely find them locally. And the cheeses don't have to be. Yeah. From from a higher end shop did, like hers, you can get them just about any supermarket with a decent cheese collection. Right. We did artisanal cheeses, but they're cheese like we told. Like I asked her, I said, "What kind of cheese? If you want to do this at home, what kind of cheese should they go get?" And mm-hmm. she, she says it after each one. Oh, does she? Okay. Yeah. yeah so the the and, and the cool thing about that is because taste is subjective. Just because it's not the same Gouda or whatever, you're still going to experience the things that we did when we played around with yep. it. Um, eating the cheese first or versus after it does some really cool stuff we get into some of the science of it and, and just the fats and the oils and things are involved and, and also a lot of the history of cheese making and whiskey making. that was fascinating yeah it's all good stuff but yeah it's on our patreon go check it out so the purpose of this episode the half episode that we could just couldn't wait was and before i even continue this we are not getting paid to do this we do not get a portion of the sales we do not get a penny. We didn't even get free cigars. We bought this package ourselves. We both did. We both went and spent the money. The same money you're going to spend, we spend the same money. There's no money out of this. This is strictly a, this needs to be said. We found someone that can say it correctly. Yeah. And then we're going to read everything. Not everything. I paraphrase some stuff. I'm going to tell you what he said. And then if you want to read the whole thing, you can go to our shop, our yeah. whiskeywhitals.com and go to the journal and read it. And it's labeled like cigar starter pack, something along those lines. This is not an affiliate marketing type no, thing. We, this is the the gentleman um, name slipping my Trevor. mind. Trevor, Jesus, Jesus. start that Trevor, over. You got to cut that out. <clears throat> this is not an affiliate piece. Start there. Yeah. So this is not an affiliate marketing no uh, engagement or or in, uh, arrangement. We actually haven't even talked to these people. Right. So Trevor, who does our writing on our website, For the reached stuff. out reached out uh, to this company and, and put together a starter pack. Specifically for you guys, you yeah, guys listening to this, our it's listeners. called Whiskey and Whitetail uh, Starter Pack or Starter Kit, yep, that's what and it's it's a it's a great deal, and you get eight cigars, which we're going to think talk a little bit about, and it's to benefit you. We don't get any money from this. We're not we're not pay being paid to, to do this. I'll tell you exactly how much it costs because I'm going to pull up my email from where I bought it, and you can use code Whiskey Whiskey, and you get is it twenty percent, ten percent? Hold on, I'll tell you. Small Batch Cigars is the website. Small Batch Cigar is the Whiskey and Wine Tales order receipt any day now. So it's seventy five ninety seven, and then code Whiskey is so was 10%. I got $7.60 off. Shipping was free. The order total was $68.37, and it gets you what we're getting ready to get into right here. Yes. So I have the package, and I think what we'll do first is... Now... Let's do the cigar stuff first. So, okay. So, 
the cigar thing, the reason we wanted to do this is because Gus and I, look at what I found. Oh, nice. I found my, uh, <laughs> my, my uh, samurai knife. He's been crying about this knife. For yeah, weeks. I finally found it. It was, you know I'm where it was? It was on the dash of my truck. On the dash? Yeah. I heard it rattling and I was like, what is that fucking sound? Yeah, you can't stand a noise yeah. in a vehicle. Yep, and it was rattling against the lens cap that I lost. <laughs> so it's a good day. So huh. the cigar stuff, Gus and I, like Gus, more into it. I'm getting into it. I actually had a cigar last night. Uh, after the Simply Stogies thing, we just kind of like, we're both like getting into cigars. Yep. We've, had, we've shared several cigars now at events. So what are they supposed to be? And again, I'm paraphrasing what he wrote because it's just too good. What are we supposed to be? And he said, one day you'll have one and you'll understand that question, which is what happened to me. I've had cigars many in my life, and I've always been like, oh, look, uh, what is another thing he brought up. Hey, look, it's a cigar humidor that's 30 bucks, comes with a cigars and a hydrometer and one of those little puck hyd- uh, humidity uh, hum- things. Humidifier, yeah. And you buy it, and it sucks. Well, that's because they suck. So basically there are cigars out there that don't give you – that mouth morning mouth thing they're not too bitter none of that stuff but it's just like anything else it's a love for the craft it's not mm-hmm. necessarily fancy either so it has a, there's a section of everything we do not we just we as humans that has a fancy part like you're into cars well there's f1 yeah you're into whiskey there's people in suits drinking pappy you're into cigars there's that guy getting out of his lambo there's the whole thing but right. the, the rest of us aren't doing that no. so what this is is yeah, so he was talking about there's no need for a cedar humidor. There's no need for right. a wood. Well, you don't need any of it. Mm-mm. He uses a cooler, an igloo cooler, and that's what I also use. All the cigars we got from Simply Stogies, they all go in a humi- in a uh, regular cooler. Yep. But humidity is important. Those humidifier pucks are junk. Your hydrometer is lying to you. Again, you have to go read this article because it explains it way better than I am. Right. But the Bovedo packs and a digital thermometer are the way to go. And there's a link on our website for his recommendation for what to get. So you don't even have to worry about it. You can just go read it and click. And again, those aren't like our Amazon links. We're not getting anything. This yeah, is no, a no. public service announcement. Yeah. We're trying to help you. <laughs> he puts great links in there to everything you need. Yep. He goes over the humidity. He goes over lighting. Because some people say you have to use a match. You have to use cedar strips and all this stuff. Yeah, and I he's was, like, I use a Bic lighter. Yep. I mean, I use a, pro, a butane torch because I'm a slightly fancier than Bic lighter. Yeah, but. I've, I've heard I, I've heard all of it, and yeah. at the end of the day, yeah, you're, I think he says in the article that uh, you know you're you'll not be short on opinions with regard yeah. to how to light a cigar. You know, um, people, some you know, uh, purists will say you have to use a a lighter or a I'm sorry a uh, the match because it's with the cedar stick. Yeah. But he's he said you know. Some plants treat the cedar, so you're not getting pure yeah, yeah. cedar. So, you know, whatever works for you, whatever you can get a hold of, whatever can light your cigar is what you, you know, kind of how we, with how do you drink your whiskey? Yeah, however you how, drink how it. How you like it, right? How, you how like. do you, if, however you get your, your cigar lit, that's, we're fine with that's it. how you should do it. Well, we're, we're definitely fine with it, but anyone else fine. <laughs> and, if, and if anyone has a problem with the way you smoke your cigar, drink your whiskey, send them our way and we'll tell them to leave you alone and stuff. Yeah, that was close. Yeah, it was close. Um, and just to further prove that we don't have any money coming out of this, the cutting, he said there's no wrong answer, just don't bite it off. And then yeah, he gives yeah. recommendation for cutters. Ours is not in that recommendation list. Nope. He also says that you can just pinch it off with your fingernails. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. There's a ton of stuff in there. And he also goes from seed to leaf. And then it, yeah. there's several articles. And if you're curious about cigars, if you're about, like, because you know when you want to learn it, I want to yeah. get into this. Dude, I, I learned a lot. I did too. I, I learned that there is a lot of similarities between how a blender blends and makes a cigar and the, the process they choose for determining the leaves for the, um, the, the three different leaves they use, right? They have the, the filler, the, the, the wrapper and the one that holds them all together. The right? binder, the binder, um, it's very similar. The whole time I'm reading it, I'm drawing connections to how whiskey is made. Like yeah. It's very, very similar. It's There's a lot of good information on there. And if you ever are curious about cigars or if you think you are an f- expert on cigars, you can go in there and look at it. And also, before we get into the cigars in this pack, you can email Trevor, Trevor at whiskeyandwhitetails.com. He's also at Guitars and Cigars Farm on Instagram, mm-hmm. and we tag him and stuff. And he's got all his contact information in his articles that he writes. Yep. So I want to. So this is an unboxing of the Simply Stogies Whiskey and Whitetails Starter Pack, put together by Trevor. 
And again, you can go read all about all that stuff. Man, I missed this knife. There's a receipt right there. So just further proof that I paid for these. $68.37, as I said before. So it comes nicely wrapped. Look at these. Excellent. So it's in bubble wrap and saran wrap, just so you don't get them crushed. And there's a Beveda pack in there. Yep. That's another thing. He gave tips on Beveda packs and which size to get based on what other companies send you. Yeah. So he's saying that some, most companies send 95 or 72, I mean, and this is 72. So he's like, you could buy 65 and then you add this to your stuff and it makes it like they do their mid thing. 60s, whatever. All right. So in the starter pack, there's two, four, six, eight cigars. So I did not go through them, but I can look at them kind of. And uh, so we've actually seen that one before in some of the packs. So the first one that he has, and he has a, pictures of everything on there. So when you get the pack, you can go through it. But the first one is an, it's ACE, but it was spelled out spe specifically A dot C dot. So I don't know if it's A-C-E, Prime Pichardo Classico Sumatra. So this is an excellent blend to showcase the Sumatra wrapper. It's this one. So, all right. And that is a blue and gold wrapper. Looks very nice. Very nice. The next one is a Aladino Corojo Toro. Uh, all Honduran. Yep. Corojo showcasing the best of Honduras. Lots of, I remember uh, my old man would, uh, would he, a specific uh, squadron that he was with, they deployed a lot to Ecuador and Honduras. And uh, he always talked about getting cigars from in, in town, you know, hand rolled by. I could do this even easier. I can just pull up the picture. Yeah, the picture that he posted. <laughs> the next one is the crowned heads. So I know that's this one. The creme robusta, robusto. So it's a hundred percent. You go to whiskeymydoors.com, click menu, then click journal, and then the article is called "Build Your Cigar Starter Kit." And he goes through all the things you need to get ready to start smoking. And at the bottom, we have the picture. Here we go. So yeah, I was correct on that. I was correct on the second one. Is the it's like a red and and yellow label. The third one is the crown heads, which is actually this one. This one. Yep. Yep. So it's a red and cream pincho in Nicaragua. He says that's a Connecticut broadleaf uh, Maduro, which is uh, he's actually specifically calls out as a good smoke for a uh, a for, new smoker. Yeah, for a new smoker. Yeah. Yep. And then the fourth one is the Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, which is the he was smoking this one yesterday. Cool. Nope, that's not it. I wrote them in the wrong order. It doesn't matter. I'll just read through them. Dunbarton Tobacco Trust Sobremesa Short Churchill with tobacco from four different countries with nuance and complexity, which is pretty cool. The Foundation Wise Man, that's the one he was smoking yesterday. Robusto showcases Mexican San Andreas wrapper in a beautiful manner. The Illusion Fume de Amour uh, is an elegant Nicaraguan blend that shows a sweet, peppery, and soft side of Nicaraguan tobacco. The Patina Connecticut Robusto is a cigar that pushes the boundaries on traditional Connecticut cigar profiles. And I'm guessing this is Jaji Bobby. I don't know. Mi Hermano is an all-Dominican cigar that presents the flavors of Dominican tobaccos. And again, you can get these at simplystogies.com. There's a link in our bio on our Instagram, and you can use code WHISKEY to save 10%. So nice. these cigars are the starter pack that our cigar guy recommends that you get started with. If you want to get started on cigars, and I think his idea was that this covers a a, a range of right blends and profiles and countries and countries and yeah. all those things. So you sizes. can you can try them, and I would recommend uh, just from my experience and and trying kind of getting into cigars, the same way that you might keep notes, even if it's just mentally of whiskeys you like. Do the same thing with cigars. Um, right. I even used to. I don't have it anymore, but. It, I used to have a little notebook and I would take the wrapper and I would actually tape the wrapper to the top of the page and then write the name of it and write down what I liked or didn't like about it. It wasn't anything fancy or sophisticated, you know, but it helped me flip through and remember what right. I liked and didn't. So I didn't go buy something again that I, that I didn't like previously. You can also show it to someone like Trevor. Like you, if, yeah. you, if you're like, Hey Trevor, I like these mm -hmm. and he could be like, all right, here's the profile you're looking for. It's the same thing as whiskey. You're like, I really like, 
I'm probably going to do that soon. I have a handful at the house that I've gone through that I've, that I've really liked so far and some others I still need to go through. And when I get through them, I want to take the handful that I really like and say, hey, what is it about these that I seem to like? And let him tell me what to spend my money on because it can get pricey just like whiskey. Well, this whole time I've been like, I don't like Robusto. <laughs> I like mild. And yeah. so yesterday I was smoking a cigar and I sent him a picture. I was like, whatever this is, this is my flavor profile. And he replied, Robusto? he said, uh, I think he said like, buckle up. That's a rough one. And I was like, really? <laughs> and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So that's whatever that is. That's my. Uh, Interesting. That's my profile. And we also discussed yesterday how long it takes to smoke a cigar. It's a lot longer. Uh, he was telling about the cone. He talks so much about cigar stuff, but yeah. you, you go in there and learn a ton of stuff. And that was kind of the, we wanted to get that out quick. We didn't want to wait three weeks for us to do another episode. No, that was really cool because we didn't, did he tell you he was doing that? No, by the way, so, he just sent me a picture. Right. Of it. So we were driving you and I for, you know, just for some kind of context and how it sort of happened. We, we had been sort of caravanning, uh, you and Andy, myself, and, and my wife, Jessica, uh, up, yeah, I guess it is up to Kentucky. And it was late. I think we had checked into the hotel. I had gone out to get a couple things at uh, a little store nearby. And you sent me this picture of this cool picture. And it was like Whiskey and Whitetail's starter kit. And I was like, what the hell is that? Who stole our shit? Yeah, yeah. like, what is this? And then I realized that it was the same company that he'd been talking to us about right. and uh it was just super cool to see uh you know something like that come together and, and to be able to have something based on his his input and what he likes um and what he recommends for our our readers and and listeners um to kind of give something to you guys I, I just think it's really cool we were really excited about it yeah i was too and that was and again this is I know everybody's like, there's got to be getting, you know, because if I heard this somewhere, but like they're getting something somewhere out of it, we're really not. We're really not. I, <laughs> we're I wish. really trying to help. I mean, we're trying to, we, we, we saw this as a gap in our business and we wanted yeah. to, because we're all about sharing whiskey and hunting stories and, and reviews and, and just doing yeah. things. And we, and we sell a couple of, you know, yeah, we sell cigar, cigar stuff. related stuff. So it was only natural that we, that we bring something like this into the fold. Yeah. So. And it's part of our little campfire thing when we sit down and yep. hang out with people at night. It's, there's usually a cigar around. So uh, we wanted to learn about it. And we were like, while we're learning, why don't we share at the same yes. time? Yeah. And so that's, I mean, that's seriously what we're doing. There's no gimmick. There's no, we're not making any money on it. Yeah. And, 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 and frankly, it was something that we had sort of discussed in passing, but weren't really giving a ton of thought to. And, and Trevor, I think we've talked about this on a previous episode. Trevor sort of came to us yeah at, right and was just and like i hey. told him he has full reign any decision or thing that he writes or anything anything cigar related outside of us rereading what he said yeah it's all him so if he has cigar stuff don't dm us <laughs> don't email us yeah send it to him send he's it to the, him he's our expert yep. and he's our resident cigar yep expert this is his world his field his journal his everything he's the one dare getting I, discount codes dare i call him a tobacconist i don't know he's my don't tobacconist know what the... <laughs> it's my tobacconist <laughs> Anyway, so now we're going to shift gears into a, something we did in Kentucky. Over that, there? Yeah. Ah. That is like some people get excited about, some people talk shit about, some people, some people. We really don't care what your opinion is. We decided to spend our Saturday morning doing this. And, and we, had we had a ton of fucking, fun. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. Excuse the F word, but we did. It was a blast. We had a lot of fun and we were kind of left our own devices. We were shown where stuff is and left alone. So yeah. Gus and I was able to explore this place over several hours and just yeah. taste stuff, blend stuff and, and, and figure it out. And so in doing that, we've created four bottles, one a rye, one a high rye bourbon, both one of each bottle will not be opened. I mean, we don't know when we're going to open it, but it's going to stay here. It's yeah. like a studio piece. But the other bottle we're going to open right now because we tasted a lot of whiskey that day. And neither of us really remember what we drank. So we're going to find out <laughs> if we were any good. And then the rest of that bottle, we'll see how many ounces that is. It's going to Patreon. So if, if you're a Patreon member now, by the time this episode comes out, it's already been divvied out. But – if the response is good, maybe we'll split the other bottle with Patreon as well. Yeah. Do you know, I wonder if there would be a way, just in, in the event that there's some overwhelming desire or 
uh, enjoyment of a particular bottle, if we could call them up and no, no, does the, it work that the, way? The the six 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 barrel, yeah, didn't, there wasn't much in, it. and then the four forty five barrel, yeah. that was empty. We emptied that. Nice. So this is the end. This will never happen again. This taste, we Ex- may do this again. This is exclusive. Yeah, people. you will never as nobody exclusive will, as it gets. You will never get a taste. This is something Gus and I spent a lot of time on, and. Perfected, these, we think. Yeah, these bottles will never be replicated again. No. I didn't. That's cool. This is it. So, hopefully, they're still good. <laughs> make a pause <laughs> and uh, pull it all out, and we'll get started. We'll get started. All right. So the place that we went is the, they're known by two names. It's the Jay Mattingly Distillery, but they uh, people also know them as Bourbon Thirty. And you've seen their bottles in stores, probably some of you. But that's not even. We didn't tag them any pictures when we were there. We didn't do anything because that's not what we were there to do. But that's where we went, and we got the full experience, and we picked two bottles that we were going to create. So one is a – they're both MGPs. One mm-hmm. is a the 21% rye bourbon, and the other one is just, is just a rye. So I'm going to precision. What was your uh, – while we're doing this, what was your favorite part and your least favorite part? Of this? Of this process, yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I liked it all. What was your least favorite part? Because that's clearly... Yeah, the whole thing was fun. I, my least favorite... It wasn't really, a, I guess, a, a least favorite. It was just weird. The dumping back in the barrel thing. Oh, it's, yeah. It's that, still, it still weirds me out. <laughs> I don't know why. strange. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know... I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, so when you get there, fuck it. When you get there, <laughs> you get to um, pull from a whiskey thief and taste any barrel you want. And then once you're done tasting, whatever's left, you dump it back in the barrel. Yeah. Which the alcohol, no doubt, kills it all. But, you know, your mind immediately goes to someone that takes a sip and, like, Ugh, and then they dump it back in there. So you wonder <laughs> that. And then. You know, it's just people are assholes. So you never know if somebody's back there and they're like, ooh, funny if I took a dump in this barrel. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know. <laughs> you you don't know. know. You never know. So it's a, there's a little bit of trust, I guess, in, in doing this. And I also don't know that they leave people alone like that. It could have just been they left us alone. Yeah, I will say that the ex- the experience was was a lot of fun, but it definitely helped that we had a good understanding of the different types of whiskey that yeah. they had in there, the different mash bills, what that yeah, meant. I was speaking the thing. Yeah, or uh, we were speaking the thing. Well, I just I, th- I think we were able to just through conversation, the folks there were able to understand. Oh, these these guys understand yeah. what they're doing for the most part. Yeah. Let's just let them taste and figure out what they want to put together, and, and then. I don't know if we'll B-roll it or probably not because we're doing this as a a podcast episode as well. But after we're done with this, uh, I'll make a little short video with maybe some hip-hop beats or something Mm -hmm. of uh, just footage from there. Like no real point, just just footage. Yeah. So let's do it. Let's do this. This is our bottle. This is our bourbon. This is our bourbon. And I mean, it's a tiny bottle. It's a tiny bottle. So this is 112 proof. And we named it Buck and Bond. Because we did not think about having to name it, and as she had the labels and out, hand. she was like, what do you what want do to name, name these? <laughs> and I was like, uh. So we're getting baby pours here so that we have the maximum amount for our Patreon. Dude. Solid smell. So there's a solid nose on that. Yeah, it's uh. You can tell that it's high proof, which is what we wanted. We wanted it yeah, to have this some one, s- stinging. Yeah, this one came in at do we want to say? You already it's said one, it was 112. Oh, 112. Okay. Yeah. It's got a lot of that bread top, which is known that bread MGP top, rye. That little funk to it. Yep. yep. Yeah, it's not bad. We did a good job, at least on smell. I think so. A little toffee, I think, on the nose. Bro. That's a lot of flavor. Dude, cheers for that. Cheers. We did all right, man. Yeah, we did pretty good. That is a ton of flavor. It, it does took, all kinds of things. It took about an hour or hour and a half of us going around to... We were there all of two and a half hours. Dozens of barrels, tasting, taking it out, tasting. We like this. We don't like that. Let's, you know, and it was just, it was a fun process. It was, palate was a little burnt out yeah. towards the end, which is why we're doing this now. And it's interesting to see kind of how things evolved, but... We hounded in on two barrels for each. Like, as we, we were going to do three, maybe four. Like, we didn't know what we were going to do. And we really, for this one, I'm, I'm more interested in what this one tastes like because I remember this one was, the bourbon was good. Yeah. So we focused in on two. 
what ended up being two barrels. And we yeah. were like, let's just 50 50 it and yep. see. Yeah. And so we 50 50 it and it was. And part of that was because we could have been there all day. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, very easily. Yeah. Could have been there all day. But Dude, that's solid. It gives you a, a like a whiskey burn, but it it's very sweet. It's got a lot of caramel. I don't get much of the cherry, which I'm glad. Even though I just said it. I'm glad I don't have to say it, but then I had to say it. But there's a lot of that bread top. You can tell it's a high-ride bourbon. Yeah, it's good, man. I like it a lot. Proud of it. Yeah, I would drink. Luckily, we have another bottle. I was getting ready to get all sad about it, but... Maybe uh, maybe a little, a little peek into what might be in our future. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. I don't know. I don't see the future on a global... Not a globe... Magic 8-Ball. That's what they are. I knew they were around. Around. If you tell us what that's from, we'll send you around. a Whiskey and White Tails gift pack. First person to tell us what that's from. Tell them it's in the gift pack, Matt. Uh, you're going to get a Whiskey and White Tails cup, glass, uh, rocks glass, Whiskey and White Tails rocks glass. I'm going to give you a smoker kit and a sticker and probably the magazine that we were just in. That's what you're going to get if you can tell us what that's from. All right. The rye is ready. Are we changing glasses? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Right. Okay. Pop it pop. Hey, that was pretty good. That was good. Not bad. Not bad. So the, we named this one Whiskey and Rye Tails. And true to our nature, by the way, there is no proof on any of these. We just were like, and then they proofed it once we were done. Yeah. We were within two. Two. Yep. This so is this is a 114, a little higher proof. So we picked a 112 and a 114, which is about where our palate normally enjoys being. So this one I'm super excited about because a good rye is hard to find. There's no way we got both of them right. You don't think so? Nose is not 114 to me. It's not at all. It's very mild. It's actually pretty... It's like a... What is a sweetness? Like, there's it's, like a... It's weird. The first thing that came to mind is birthday cake. And I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, the, definitely. That's I don't exactly know if it's the vanilla or if it's, but like... It's like cupcake vanilla. Yeah, <clears throat> cupcake. Definitely cupcake. I think it's just maybe the bread top from the, from the rye. No, this is full on cupcake. <clears throat> Which if we could smell back then, it would be cool to bottle it and then try it later and then name yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whiskey and rye tails. We're both getting cup. Yeah, it's like it's like cupcake batter. It's awesome. Vanilla things. cake batter. There you go. Yeah, that's the final answer. Vanilla cake batter. Maple. What is that? I think that's maple. I don't know, but it's it's actually not I bad. It's good. I think it's good. <laughs> I think we did a good job on that one too. Yeah, man. I think those are some really unique there's some really unique flavor profiles with both of those whiskeys. Dude, and that's not even like because it's already gone. Like we're not trying to get more I mean, we definitely want more Patreon people because we're gonna do this again. Yeah, we but will. But if you joined right now, it's too late. These are already gone. Yeah. So we're not even trying to pitch it, but fuck. More or less just saying, sorry you missed out. Yeah. This is it's a hundred percent cupcake batter. Yeah, it's like it's cupcake batter. You have to get past the you know obviously the obvious. I don't even smell whiskey the, stuff. The but there's, no, there's really hardly any ethanol at all. And I know, which is funny because we watched him do, we watched him proof it. Yeah, we watched it. Well, I was standing right there. We did the temperature thing. We put the thing and let it stop bobbing. We yeah. did the whole thing. We stood. We were there for the whole thing. We watched them pull it out of the barrels that we picked. Yep. We watched followed, them proof it. Yeah, if you've all the story that day we were there, you yeah. saw some of it. So, which we're actually, I'm going to go ahead. And, you know how you can put the stories in your thing? Yeah. So we're going to put oh, yeah, that yeah. in there, so you can oh, go yeah. watch it as well. We'll That's put right. that in there, dude. This is. I think I like this better than the bourbon. It is really good. Hmm. That's pretty yum, cool. Yum, yum, yum. So this is bottle one of two, and we're keeping the second one. And these will be sampled out, which there's, I don't even know that we have enough for everyone in Patreon, but we might. If everybody gets an ounce, I think it will be fair. There's almost, there's almost mint. 
Yeah. Get that right. I do get a little mint. I'm like the out. I'm yeah, breathe yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The very back, the back of my tongue. Damn, you housed it, bro. The, it's good, man. It's good. <clears throat> I got to be honest with you. The bourbon, I've, I've definitely had better. But this rye, I would drink this every day. It's easy drinker for sure. I mean, it's a, ni- it's a nice. This sipper. whole it's episode a- is us looking like pieces of shit because they're like nobody's gonna believe anything we're saying. I don't care if you believe it or not. I'm speaking the truth. I mean, how often do we lie? You know, not very often. Not very often. Yeah, we usually give our pretty upfront opinion. I mean, have you ever heard us? This is a good question. You ever heard us brag about the quality of our stuff? Like our like we know we have good. Woodworking, we know our stuff is quality. We don't have the little dimples like on the bottoms of these. If you look at these things anywhere else, you'll see a little pilot hole because they used a Forstner bit. Forstner bit. We don't do that. We don't have that. We actually sand, Gus sands all these down real smooth. By the way, we quit selling <laughs> these. You changed your octave when you said my name, and it's, it, it's going to sound like you cut that in there. Like, is it? No, I didn't. It's, but the point being, the point is that, being that we make really good wood yeah. stuff and we never brag about it. So the fact that we're bragging about this should tell you something. A little something's on. I think we're just proud of it, man. It was I fun. am proud of it. It was fun, it. dude. We did it. It was a lot to consider. It was a little bit overwhelming at first. I mean, we sort was, of narrowed it down. Just so you know, these weren't all honey barrels. Like most of them were. Oh, no. There were some that we definitely like. There were a couple that I, while you were inside doing something, I was at the other the other area where the other barrels were. And I, I took a couple of samples out with the thief and i didn't even taste them like i smelled them and was like just dug nope. right back in yeah going back to the, especially some of the ones that hit, were really old like there were some like 13 year old and 15 year old barrels where the whiskey coming out of that was black i bled and was. there wasn't much left yeah. right and i mean you could just just the smell of it alone i was like no not yeah not today <laughs> well i remember that too that I, there was things that i pulled out that were black they were i was like i'm not drinking that yeah not, yeah again we made some jokes about being there being body parts in there. Yeah, some of them had like chunks of shit in it. I mean, I don't, I don't know. If it's I, would, like- I would like to go back and do it again. I, I thought I overheard them discussing them moving into a new bigger facility. That would be cool. Like this, like how sl- many barrels do you think they had? Uh, two hundred. I was gonna say a hundred. Okay, one hundred and fifty maybe. So a hundred. I'm I'm good with that number. So, so, somewhere in there, and that we may be way off, but I'm just kind of thinking. And we we tasted. <laughs> Some of each category, but as far as the bourbons yeah. and ryes go, I think we tasted we really, all of them. Yeah, we tasted all of them to start with, and then we really. Well, we, we didn't taste 150 bourbons. No, 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 we no, no, tasted, no, no. I mean, we tasted yeah, each yeah. of the of the a weeded, a high rye, right. straight, but 99 percent corn. We tasted all of the things. Yeah, and then we decided to lean into just doing a, a rye and a bourbon. Yeah, so that's what we sort of. But we probably tasted. I bet you ups. together we tasted. Because we were to doing things together, and then we were like, let's just divide and conquer. Yeah. And I think together, we probably tasted 25 barrels. Easily, yeah. yeah and easily. we sort of came together and narrowed it down to, well, I like this one, I like this one. We got the... the uh, Colander. Colander, and, and thank you. I haven't, I haven't think I've used that word Science. since eighth grade. You're the one with a master's <laughs> degree, too. In cybersecurity. <sighs> Thanks. By the way, me our, on blast. Uh, our October... Our Halloween Patreon has demanded that we dress up for Halloween. So not only are we going to dress up, we are going to assume personas. And we figured it out today. We're not going to tell you what it is. But our Halloween episode, if you li- if this is the first time you listen to us, this is a Halloween episode. Like anybody that joins and that's their first episode, they're going to be like, these guys suck. What the fuck is this? <laughs> but the rest of you will really like it. So we look forward um, to that. But anyway, yeah, we yeah, tasted so all the things. Yeah, we tasted a lot of stuff. And it was it was just a lot of fun. The, the people there uh, are super cool. We got to taste some blends that they're working on. Uh, yeah, so, you know, we got to smell watch that glass. them. We got to watch them. Uh, the empty glass. Yeah, money, dude. I'm telling you, it's like cake batter, like vanilla cake batter, and man, I'm so glad we we got to like a molasses or maple. I think you said maple. Yeah, maple, yeah. maple cake. Yeah, I don't know. It's maple. really good. We'll let the Patreon people tell us what they taste. There's a cookie that's made with maple syrup in it. Um, or maybe it's molasses that my wife makes, and this kind of hits those notes. It's good. Yeah. I'm I'm very, I'm I'm happy with it. I am too. All right. <clears throat> so this is supposed to be a short episode. We don't go in 40 minutes, but this is just a bonus thing. Is there anything else that you want to say before we close out? And they may not hear from us for two weeks. They they will. I'm sure. Oh, by the way, if if you like the podcast and you're not listening on YouTube, 
we do a lot more stuff that's on YouTube. So yeah, we definitely do. So if, if once a week isn't enough, please go yeah, check we out have, YouTube. We have other whiskey specific and, and yep. whitetail hunting yep. and hunting specific stuff. Ozone box and, and, and whitetail hunting tips and whiskey tips and we go all, yeah. all kinds of stuff. If you do. take the time to support us here, we would greatly appreciate, and I hate doing this kind of thing, but. I wasn't even going to do it. Well. I was going to let it go for this one. <sighs> go support us on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, look what we just give you. We just gave you all these cigar kits and, and free cigar stuff. Yeah. You know, and we do this is the stuff that we just do. We're just doing if, if it and want, we're letting you have if it. If you really free. want extra stuff and you really want input and you really want to get involved, then go, you know, hit us up and, and ask, you know, see about the Patreon thing. If you have questions, yeah, we'll, you, we'll answer them. It, we're, we're, we'll be cordial on, on like the instant grams and stuff. But if it comes to episode requests, that's from now on only Patreon. It, that's it. Yep. But yep. So thanks everybody for listening. Welcome to the first half episode. And I hope you enjoy Monday's episode with Chad. I know Chad. that we will. Yep, absolutely. And Patreon people, get ready. Get ready. Yeah. You're about to get all kinds of goods, dude, because they got t-shirts They're coming. shirts coming this month. They got a bottle. Well, yeah, the, the bottle material month. has a bottle coming this month. Hey, come and on. Come on. Come on. I'm just saying, man. Don't say all the things. You're missing out. Shh. Don't tell everybody. There's, we have secret compartments in Patreon. I didn't say a, a bottle of what. I'm just saying we have secret compartments in Patreon. Mouthwash. So once you get there, you find out. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a mouthwash. But, all right. Until next time. Yeah. Fun, Gus, hit that fucking button.